Good evening. Today is Wednesday, October 14th, and tonight you're tuning in to the Milltown Borough Merrill, Merrill Debate or Candidates Forum. My name is Alicia Morgan with Rutgers University, and I'll be the moderator this evening. Um, I do want to thank a couple, several people for their, their work in this uh, event. First, Channel F Milltown Channel 15 Public Television for sponsoring and organizing the event. Uh, also, uh, our timekeeper this evening is Russ Targe Tanger, who will, Tanger, sorry, thank, who will keep us uh, on time. <laughs> anyway, um, pre, uh, per the conversations before we started in agreements with the candidates, uh, what we are doing is we are starting with uh, um, Eric's, Eric Stieber will be going first. I will read an opening statement then, and, or a biography, and then he will follow with his opening statement. And then following that, um, Ron Dixon will offer, I, I will read his biography, and he will offer his opening statement. At that point, we will go into questions from our press <laughs> representative, who is Rob Bacosi from tapinto.net. Tap into and then following that set of questions, we will, I will read questions that have been submitted to us by members of the audience. Um, so with that, I think we're ready to start. Um, as I said, we're going to start with the uh, biography of Eric Stieber, and I'll do that right now. Um, <clears throat> Eric Stieber is a, oh, Mr. Stieber is right there, just to make sure we all know who we're talking about. Um, Mr. Stieber is a 51-year-old lifelong resident of Milltown. He is the father of four children, a communicant of Our Lady of Peace Church, and is engaged to marry, or to marry Joanne Sisolak. Eric attended Milltown Public Schools, St. Joseph's High School in Metuchen, Middlesex County College, and Middlesex County Fire Academy. Eric is employed as a land surveyor for Fisk Associates. Eric has served as mayor of the borough since 2012. <coughs> During his term, he has successfully worked with a bipartisan council to initiate and maintain numerous improvements to the borough, including borough substation, including the borough substation. He is on the board of directors of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors and is currently the president of the Middlesex County Conference of Mayors. Eric also previously served the borough as a councilman from 1994 to 1999 and from 2005 to 2007. He was elected council president in both 1996 and 2007. During his time in the council, Eric was the chairman of numerous council subcommittees, including the Department of Finance, Administration, and Planning, the Department of Pub Public Works, the Department of Environmental Health and Social Services, and the Recreation Department. During his prior service, Eric was instrumental in the creation of numerous borough committees and commissions, including the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, the Shade Tree Commission, the Environmental Commission, and the Milltown Revitalization Committee. Eric's decades of service to the borough of Milltown far exceed his time, yeah, far exceed his time spent for as an elected official. Prior to his election, he participated as a member of countless borough committees, served as a volunteer firefighter in Eureka Engine Company Number no. One, and volunteered as a recreational soccer coach. At this point, we'll let Eric Stieber speak for himself. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I am Mayor Eric A. Stieber, and I am seeking re-election to the office of mayor. As your mayor for the past four years, I can proudly say that I worked with and supported all of our council, regardless of their party affiliation, and moved our town forward while achieving notable positive results. I worked with our borough, county, and state officials to acquire the property needed and to plan the construction of our new electrical substation. I worked with our council to purchase the property and begin preliminary designs for the new public works facility. I led the charge to capture a $311,000 grant for a flood abatement project that will reduce the flood risk to our downtown and produce 50 new public parking spaces in a park-like setting that will support our business district. I worked with our Office of Emergency Management to create a visible and comprehensive communication and emergency management plan for Milltown. Key purchases of emergency equipment were made through grants that allow us to proactively protect Milltown residents and property. The success of our work is evident by comparing the borough's expert proactive handling of Superstorm Sandy in 2012 to the poor weak response to the storm of April 2007 and Hurricane Irene in 2011. 
I urge the council to continue the relining and replacement of our aging water lines and issue a questionnaire to residents to help us solve the water quality issues. I enlisted the help of U.S. Congressman Rush Holt to stop the existing Milltown Post Office from being closed forever and to obtain a commitment from postal officials to open a new facility in a new location in Milltown away from floodwaters. I strongly advocated for the design and construction of new handicapped parking spaces and improvements to the municipal parking lot located behind the public library, upgrading 65 parking spaces for the support of our school, library, and downtown businesses. I worked to improve relations with our existing businesses, laid plans to increase downtown public parking spaces. I advocated bringing new professional and commercial businesses to our town. I continued my support of our school professionals and Board of Education to share services and help them keep costs in check wherever possible, giving the Board more funds to de dedicate to our, our, to our children's education. I had many meetings with the animal rights community, visited our former animal control facility, and worked with our council to contract for new humane animal control services with another town. I worked with all higher levels of government to ensure more revenue was brought to Milltown in the form of grants and low-cost loans. My position as president of the Middlesex County Conference of Mayors and as a member of the Board of Directors of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors ensures that Milltown is being well represented on the county and state level and also affords me the support and expertise of hundreds of mayors across the state. My dear friends, I offer you 25 years of governmental experience and a lifelong love of Milltown. I come to you this evening to ask you to support me in my re-election to the office of mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stieber. Okay, um, our next, our, at next, I want to uh, ask Ron Dixon, our candidate for, second candidate for mayor, to, who, uh, actually, I'll get this right. Uh, first, I'm going to read a biography of, of uh, Mr. Dixon, and then he will do his statement. Um, Ron Dixon is a retired law enforcement officer where he spent 30 years with the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office as a lieutenant investigator and eight years as a municipal police officer. Ron has worked in various investigative capacities with the United States government while employed with the County Prosecutor's Office. Ron was assigned to the U.S. Justice Department Drug Enforcement Agency and worked with them for 15 years. His assignments included, but were not limited to, narcotics, smuggling, gang violence, organized crime, and firearms. In 1988, Ron was elected president of the National Drug Enforcement Officers Association, Incorporated, and there he served three terms. Ron is a graduate of both the FBI and DEA academies. Ron has served on the council from 2009 to 2011. While previously on the council, Ron served as the Chair for Public Works, the Environmental Health and Social Services Department, and the Parks and Recreation Department. Ron was elected to council last November, took office in January of 2015, and is currently the Chairman of the Finance and Administration Department. Ron served on the Milltown Municipal Alliance, where he worked to promote the DARE program and created the June Fishing Derby to promote, quote, get hooked on fishing, not drugs, campaign. Ron is a certified DARE instructor and was the Middlesex County DARE coordinator for the 45 Middlesex County DARE officers. Ron has served as post commander for American Legion Joyce Kilmer Post 25 in Milltown from 2005 to the present. His work at the American Legion has helped veterans and their families, and Ron currently volunteers as a member of the Office of Emergency Management for most, both Middlesex County and the borough of Milltown. Ron was selected as the 2014 recipient of the Community Award of Excellence by the East Brunswick Charitable Foundation. Ron has four grown children and seven grandchildren. He lives on John F. Kennedy Drive and has lived in Milltown for 10 years. At this point, Ron will tell us about himself. Thank you. Good evening. Why run for mayor? It's a legitimate question. And that's a question I've heard quite often after I made the decision to run. Well, my answer is quite simple. I want to continue to serve the residents of this town and do what I can do to help. I believe that with my skills, knowledge, and experience, I can promote quality of life in the community and can ensure the borough is effective in doing its job to the benefit of all residents. Milltown has had an inspiring history, and in my vision of the future of Milltown, I see that amazing story. I see a mill town that has relocated all borough facilities out of the floodplain. 
I see a mill town that focuses on infrastructure development, not just routine maintenance. I see a mill town that continues to work with small businesses to encourage development along Main Street. And I see a mill town that is an appealing place to live and raise a family. I see a mill town that ma maintains its small town feel. We face many challenges and the need for strong, effective leadership has never been greater. My <clears throat> principles are simple. Integrity, honesty, transparency, and co collaboration with the people of Milltown. I'm not a career politician, and I owe no one for my career advancement. I'm well educated and strong in my convictions. No matter what it is in life I choose to do, I do the very best. I believe my integrity and my many life experiences will allow me to effectively address the difficult financial issues and community needs that are now facing our town. I will do the right thing because it's right. Being retired, I am willing and able to serve our residents on a full-time basis, and I'm available anytime for residents' questions, concerns, or comments. I am not a person who will sit on the sidelines and watch things happen. I get involved. I have dedicated my life to people and public service. It's what I believe in and what I know. I am able to think outside the box, willing to consider creative solutions to reach a win-win outcome for all concerned. It is important in open government that citizens are well informed, and I am committed to ensuring transparency with the residents of Milltown. Whether it's a road closure, a power outage, request for information, or notifying an official about something that's important to a resident, it's critical that we keep our residents in the know. Transparency is key to restoring faith in our elected officials. We need a mayor who is forward-thinking and action-orientated, who reaches out to the entire community, trying to bring in more voices than the familiar ones present at all <laughs> council meetings, who is clear-eyed about public safety challenges, and who brings a mindset of public service and not a political agenda. I am confident in my ability to serve well my many neighbors and friends, the people of Milltown. Thank you very much, Mr. Dixon. Okay, at this point, we are shifting to the first set of questions. And again, uh, Rob Bacosi from the Tap Into Milltown in Spotswood, Ricochet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ricochet. No worries. Ricochet, that's Rock right. I'm trying to go between French and, you know, something, you know, something like that. But anyway, Hungarian. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is your time as the as the uh, our, our representative to the tap into into Milltown and Spotswood online newsletter or an online newspaper to ask some questions of the candidates. Thanks, Alicia, and good evening to both gentlemen. Um, when I had the pleasure of being the media rep last year at the council debate or the Candidates Forum, um, we got into talking a lot about infrastructure, which is something in general which is near and dear. Mr. Dixon, you made a, a reference to it in your opening statement. Um, infrastructure is big in a town like Milltown because of its age and the need to focus on it. You've got the electrical substation now pretty much ready to go. The public works is, is also starting to get to that point. The general question is, for each of you, what's next? What's your biggest priority and focus as it relates to infrastructure? I guess I'm first this evening? You are first, as, as with the opening statements, yes. The, uh, the number one thing on my uh, hit list would be uh, water quality. Um, it's a very big concern in town. Uh, this past year, we. Uh, put out a, a water questionnaire asking people to let us know how their water quality was uh, at various times in the day and if there's any kind of uh, bad odor or anything like that. Uh, all of that information is compiled. Uh, we know that there was certain ways that the uh, water department was flushing our lines, but over the years a lot of the lines uh, have corroded. 
uh, a lot of the valves are no longer functioning. What we're looking to do is find out exactly what those problems are, which ones function, which ones don't, and come up with a better system of flushing. And while we do that, we're going to learn and we're going to understand exactly where our deficiencies are so we can put together a nice uh, capital improvement program and keep rolling on. As a matter of fact, we have another one that we just voted on uh, the past night, and we're getting ready to do about another million, million and a half of water lines in town. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dixon? Well, I agree wholeheartedly with you, Rob, that the maintenance and the upkeep of the infrastructure is paramount in this town. We cannot let things that are 100, 120 years old just deteriorate. We have to develop a plan with all department heads in maintaining that upkeep and going forward in maintaining what infrastructure we have here. Um, as the mayor said, we at last night's council meeting, we as a council approved uh, $1.9 million to continue the water quality in town by relining the lines we also approved the uh, application for a grant possibly to paint the water tower, again, which is another water issue in town. But the infrastructure is more than just water. We have roadways that we have to maintain. We have a, a Ford Avenue that right now it's, it's an eyesore. It's an eyesore to every community around. We have to keep moving forward with pushing the owners of that to clean it up and make it presentable. And that's, again, part of all our infrastructure in this very small town. I want to expand on that thinking process a little bit, knowing that, you know, for instance, the Ford Avenue project is sort of in the court still, and it's kind of tied up to where it's a wait and see on this. But one of the areas that, in speaking to the residents of Milltown, Everybody is always, as they are in most towns, but, you know, small town USA fits the mill town mold and image for a long, long time. The residents are always concerned about the tax situation, property taxes in specific, being really a concern of theirs and whether they're going to be able to continue to afford to live in mill town. How do you keep working on managing the process both from a budget perspective and priority perspective, while at the same time understanding the resident's concern about not spending so much that it becomes a problem to their pocketbook. Mr. Dixon? Well, I agree. Uh, we brought to the council's attention and the people in town that the owner of Ford Avenue owes us a, close to a million dollars in back taxes. And for a town this size, that's huge. We are doing whatever we can to recoup that money. We have been informed that uh, EPA has also filed a lien against that property for $3 million. And uh, they're also taking us to court to try and get their money before we get our money. And that's gonna be up to the court system. Um, we speak about Ford Avenue. There's, when it came to, to light that there was such a danger over there as buildings leaning onto occupied parking lots where people were pulling in on a daily basis, uh, we took immediate steps to get that building down and secured. And uh, we proceeded with civil liabilities and criminal proceedings against the owner, something that was never done before. And that's now forced him to continue going forward and hopefully obtain the permits to demolish all those buildings and to clean that site up. Great. Thank you. Mr. Stever. Yes. The question was in regards to taxes and how to keep things rolling along, making uh, upgrades and things. Um, we're very lucky in Milltown. Uh, we actually have two um, political parties who compete with keeping taxes as low as humanly possible. There's a little dance that we have to do to not just keep taxes low, but also provide services and do upgrades to move our community forward. Uh, one way that we can do that is through grant writing. And grants are something that I've been very successful in getting for the town for years. I've gotten probably in excess of $7 million uh, in grants at least uh, over the years. Um, there's grants, there's low-cost loans. Um, what I've been trying to do with the council is get them in the mindset of 
a, 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 a look for a grant. If you're looking to do something, find a grant. Um, as a matter of fact, last night I, we bonded $125,000 for fire department equipment. We needed it. Very, very important. Make sure you have that. In speaking with other mayors around the county and around the area, uh, they have gotten uh, grants for those. So those towns are spending zero on this equipment. We spend 125000 that we're going to have to pay off. So we really need to get the council to understand the importance and to go out and get these grants. That's the way to keep the, the taxes low since we're already down to the bone on most things anyway. Thank you very much. Okay, our next question. We are seeing in a sister town of yours, Spotswood, that they have a referendum on the ballot this year regarding infrastructure related issues for their schools and such. It's becoming quite a critical problem for that town. It clearly has the risk of Im impacting the residents. It is being publicized heavily, not only by our site, but generally. What is your view on being able to, um, let's call it save for a rainy day, so that the kind of problem that is existing right now in, in Spotswood, which from an age perspective is similar to Milltown, so that you have the ability to avoid having to go to the residents to that degree? Okay. Uh Unfortunately, we are already at that point in Milltown also. And it goes back to your earlier question in regards to infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure in this town has been let go for 100 years. I, I always say something in Milltown. You have to build it right in Milltown because it's never going to be maintained. Okay, So this is what has to be done. We have to make sure that uh, we put together great plans that we can project out 50, 100 years. For instance, you know, you're going to build the electric substation. You make sure you do it right. You do the water lines. You make sure you do those right. You build them to last the next 100 years. Uh, a lot of things in Milton are very critical. Uh, our sewer pump station, we have a new pump station, but the lines that deliver the sewerage to New Brunswick are antiquated. They need to be replaced too. So, you know, Milton, we're looking at tens of millions of dollars of, of potential uh, expenditures. It, we really have to take our time, plan properly, and spend that money at an easy rate so we don't impact negatively the residents of town. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Dixon, your comment about the structure? Yes, ma'am. I agree that money has to be allocated for a lot of projects in this town. And as a head of finance this year, I addressed that issue. And I've taken money out of each part of it, each section of it, and allocated that to be put to the side. For example, $5,000 aside for painting the water tower. You know, it's nice to say we're going for a grant, but if we don't get that grant, all of a sudden we have to come up with the money. So we're allocating money for future endeavors. If, in fact, we get the grant for the water tower, fine. That gives us more money to put into another uh, infrastructure problem. As the mayor just said, the lines, the sewer lines are going into Brunswick. We know they have to be all fixed. Money has been put aside for that endeavor. Again, not knowing what the courts are going to tell us going back to Ford Avenue, what we have to accomplish. And we've learned through court proceedings that it's going to be our obligation to accomplish that and not the builder of the property. Thank you. Okay. Our next question. want to switch the topic a little bit. It's still kind of infrastructure related, but let's talk about small and mid-sized businesses. Obviously, the online paper that I own falls into that category. There are a lot of small and mid-sized businesses. I would say the core of Milltown is that type of a business. It's not a, a, a town that easily attracts very large-scale stuff, other than maybe a chain store here and there. Fortunately, Unlike, for instance, Route 18 and, and the problems East Brunswick is having right now with vacancies, you don't see as much of that in Milltown, but there are some. As mayor, where you've got to work with the small business community as well as with your council members to try to work on plans to attract and fill those vacancies, what would be 
your approach to doing so in what has been a difficult economic climate still? This question will start with Mr. Dixon. I believe initially you're going to have to get together with the Chamber of Commerce and find out what a lot of their needs are. We understand one of the problems, and it's quite evident in town and looking around, is parking. We have to provide as much parking as we possibly can, whether it be on side streets or joining streets to the businesses. If the people can't get there and can't park, the town is nice, the town is old, but we don't come by on horseback anymore. We have to be able to park vehicles somewhere and do our shopping. And the business owners can help us in this endeavor. Some business owners have the parking. Is it possible to share this? Uh, you have the parking behind the library. Uh, we're talking about utilizing that more and possibly putting more walkways out towards Main Street to make that parking more viable for the businesses in that general area. What, if you had, regardless of how the courts rule or anything else, if you had ultimate autonomy to decide what you wanted to do with that area, what would you do? Many years ago, um, when I was on the council way back in the day, I actually made a rendering of that property, and I gave it to then Mayor Gloria Bradford. And my vision of that area was to have commercial and professional downstairs, like, a, like an open mall, with uh, the ability for people to have stall shops. And the second and third floors would be housing. It would be condominiums and uh, high-end apartments with a uh, small amount of single family all the way out in the back, uh, almost like a, a little estate homes back there, um, but with a proper uh, frontage of a downtown look along uh, Ford Avenue and um, Main Street. You know, the thing of it is, is we are in the electric business, and if we sell electricity, we're making money from against the business, you know, from the businesses, and that turns into um, uh, tax relief for our residential people. So that's that's what it would look like if it were if it were my call. Okay, thank you. Now, Mr. Dixon. Well, as you stated, Ford Avenue is back in the courts again. I can't say I agree with the decision. I don't know where the judges are going, but in September just two months ago, the League of Municipalities contracted a company to come in and review the COA obligation for the state of New Jersey and what's it all about. The COA obligation for Ford Avenue has changed dramatically. Heard this report. The report basically says that when COA was first up and was coming about during the Mount Laurel decision, that people were moving from the cities to the suburbs and there was not enough housing for them. Now the trend is moving out of the suburbs and back into the cities where jobs are closer, that let uh, commuting back and forth. So again, your obligation should be lower. In lowering that obligation, and if we stay with that report, and if we support the League of Municipalities in that report, it's very possible we could minimize our COA obligation. We could provide small businesses over there, senior housing, and possibly park-like lands. Thank you very much. And this is our, our final question. Do you envision a time where you would want to add a school to the existing school board of education in Milltown structure? Would that be something that you would have an interest, let's say, based on today's population would I entertain a motion like that I would certainly listen to all the all the facts about it the biggest problem you'll have with putting a school in this town is where you don't have the property we're out of all, almost all building areas mm -hmm. except for the Fort Avenue site which I'd be more than happy to put a school over there tomorrow but I would I'd definitely entertain something like that. Uh, we have a very good relationship with Spotswood, where we send our, our ninth grade and up students. Uh, it works well. It's an inter corp, you know, inter local agreement. We're doing well with it. We have two fine schools in town, and we have to support those schools. We have to watch what they need and what and much help as we can for them. But yes, I mean, would it be nice to have our own high school? Sure, it would. 
Do we have a place to put it? I don't think so. Could we afford it? That'd be something else. I mean, right now we're paying, I believe it's like $2,800 a year for each kid to go over to Spotswood. That's not a lot of money to build a school and to do teacher salaries and bring everything else in. Thank you very much. And Mr. Stieber. Yes, thank you. Um, being that I've been in Milltown my whole life, every couple of years, the, uh, the thought of Milltown having a high school uh, always gets everyone's attention. Um, we're at a very, very critical time in our town's history. We're at a set, we're ascending district to Spotswood. Helmet is also ascending district to Spotswood. They're in the midst of building a very large housing development back there. Spotswood High School is only going to hold so many children. And if our Ford Avenue, um, if, the, if the plan over there goes the way the state wants it, we're going to have a lot of children too. And it's going to end up where Spotswood can only handle so many children. So either Spotswood High School is going to have to get bigger, Milltown will have to consider to build their own to take care of our own kids, or my feeling is, is they'll be looking to take Milltown children and send them over to a half-empty New Brunswick High School. So Milltown, we have to be very vigilant, watch what goes on, watch the trends, and watch what happens over in Helmetic, because that's very telling about what may become our future in Milltown. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you very much. And that, the, we are now done with the uh, press questions. And <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna move towards the questions that were submitted earlier by members of the audience tonight. Um, I, I'm, I have the, the latitude to, to decide which question comes next. And since we're talking about Ford Avenue, I decided there was, may as well just piggyback on with another Ford Avenue question. Um, the question we received was, given the disastrous effect, effect Ford and Avenue redevelopment will have on our schools and utilities, are you prepared as mayor to appeal the court's decision on the number of units and save the taxpayers huge, incre huge cost increases? I'm sorry. my. <laughs> my reading the handwriting. Um, and I think we'll start with Mr. Stieber. Yes. Again, with Ford Avenue, we, we have to tread very lightly over there. Um, you got to remember, the, the COA obligation is now, being that it's in the courts, is going to come down from the, from the state. And basically what they say is going to be is going to be. We could choose to fight it in court. However, I think the, the potential for us to become victorious is slim to none. And my fear would be wasting hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars to fight something that we have not a prayer in the world to win. You got to understand something. In, in order to understand really what's going on with COA is you have to know what the state of New Jersey uh, is looking to make our area of the state look like. Basically, if you look at the, the county plans and the state plans of build out, one day in the future, Middlesex County is going to look a lot like uh, Union County or Essex County. They're looking to put as much housing in these areas as they can. And this is, this is the fact, this is our reality. So we need to you know, watch our own growth and just be very wary of what goes on over there. But again, I wouldn't look to spend millions and millions of taxpayer dollars in a fight that we probably will not win. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dixon? Thank you. I think the first thing, and I, I'm gonna report, or go back to that report I just stated, hired by the League of Municipalities. We are stronger as a group, and I think as a group, we should be looking at the COA and how it's coming about. Backing reports such as this, being very familiar with reports such as this, making the judge aware. As we all know what's happening now with COA, they took it away from an, a group of men and put it back in the judge's hands. And a judge has no real experience with housing and building. He's listening to many different aspects before he makes a decision. This report is very accurate in what it's doing. It lists other reports and why a lot of their information, as reports are out of Rutgers, they disagree with a lot of their co-obligations and what they come up with, the facts and figures. I think as a unit, when we do joint services, which would just be bonding together with League of Municipalities and fighting any COA decision that is gonna be detrimental to this town, 
again, uh, building or 500 homes over there, and we only get half of that in children, you might as well close our other two schools down because we have no place to put them. Interesting. Thank you very much. Um, rather, moving from the, the specific to the <coughs> general, uh, and our next question would be going to Mr. Dixon first. If elected, what are some of the initiatives that you would bring to the council in the upcoming year? It may or may not include Ford Avenue. Well, again, the initiatives would be to watch the spending as I did this year as head of finance and get all departments working together with the councilmen's council people, mm -hmm. assistance and deci What happens was you have to go back to the department heads and say, okay, do you need five trucks or do you need one truck? Do you need right. four pieces of, of machinery to cut grass or can we get away with two? When we started out with the budget this year, it was projected at almost a 15% raise in the taxes. Working with all the heads of, of the departments within the borough, we dropped that down to just a little over two, which was a manageable and a big drop. And yet no one complained. We're still having the same services, we're still getting the equipment we need, and we're still providing the, the residents of this town the services that they deserve. Very good, thank you. And again, Mr. Stieber, about initiatives the, you would pursue? Yes, the things that I would look at are usually, um, let's start with the big one, taxes. It's always on everybody's mm -hmm. mind. We spoke a little about that earlier. You know, as I said, the council every year, regardless, Republican, Democrat, they always come in. It's a zero line budget. You start off with zero. You build from there. You find out what's really needed, what's not needed. And let me let you know at home, folks, every year we get it as low as we possibly can. That's number one. You got to look for bonds, low cost loans in order to keep the taxes down. A big thing that I'll continue to pursue is water quality in Milltown. It's a hot issue. We have to ensure right now we've got the, the electric under control with our new substation. Next on the hit list is water quality. We have to ensure that our water quality is top notch because we need to protect our big, most of our biggest investments are our homes. And if you have a town that has bad electric and bad water, that's not good for uh, the value of your home. And the final thing would be is to continue on with environmental things like shade trees and flooding. The shade trees are a public safety issue, not an environmental issue so much. And the flooding downtown needs to be taken care of. So I'm, that would be things that I'd be looking to do starting next year. Thank you very much. Um, the next question that I, I'll ask you is, and again, we would be starting with Mr. Steber on, on this, this question, is what speaking of management of resources, what new practices would you put in place to make Milltown more green? Well, we have our own electric utility in town, and we're, we're a very rare creature uh, in the state of New Jersey. I've always thought that why don't we look into solar? Why can't Milltown generate some of its own electricity uh, as a power company that we could use to uh, augment or supplement our electric sales. That would be something we could look to. Um, I've worked with the Environmental Commission for years and uh, we've always you know, looked at things like uh, our stormwater uh, retention, detention, uh, if we could have it go back uh, for recharge with uh, pervious pavement, things like this. There's uh, so many other things that we could look to do uh, in town. Um, water, we've already started with uh, water gardens and things over at the school. We're teaching the kids how to make water gardens. Uh, so there are quite a number of things that we can look to uh, on a grand scale, such as solar, all the way down to water gardens in the homes. Thank you very much, Mr. Dixon. When I was on council last time, we looked into a lot of joint services with surrounding communities. Right now, we're in one with South River with the electric. We help them, they help us. It just works out good for both of us. Also, you have other shared services that we can get more involved with that's going to help the borough. Um, <clears throat> we have a new electric facility. It's been said several times. It's been going on for years, and it's finally come to to light. But what people don't realize, it's going to cost us over $100,000 a year to maintain that electric facility so it doesn't get into the shape of the one that we have now. That's just maintenance every year. That's going to be another big cost 
to taxpayers, but we have to do it to maintain it. That also goes back to the infrastructure. Because it's new does not mean it should not be maintained. And we have to do a lot of, as we do with everything that we do. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dixon. And actually, I will piggyback on that last comment because there happens to be a question that, that does that. Um, the, the, the new state-of-the-art state of electric utility will soon be operational. If elected, who will you recommend to the council to manage the historic investment in Milltown's future? And the, the, the word here is who. I don't know if, if, there's, if you also want to talk about how. How would we do it? Uh, there's a, a company now that's put this together. We have to take advice from our borough engineer, uh, CME's uh, advice, the people that are putting it together. Again, these are the people that are talking to us right now about maintenance, how, what we have to do. Uh, with, without the maintenance, we're going to be back in the same boat we were here. It's only going to be all inside, and maybe it'll never flood, but it may not work. You have to change. It's like a car. It's simple, just changing oil, but the oils contain PCBs. It right. costs more to get rid of them, to dispose of them. That's why it's such a high figure. And as far as what, what I would do as far as we're going to look at all aspects, look at bids at what has to be done. The installer of the electric is going to tell us this is what you need. So that will be part of a bid process going out. Um, I personally don't know that much about building electric substations. I know what it looks like. <laughs> I think it looks pretty. And I know how to turn on a light. And that's my definition of electricity. But I would acquiesce basically to the people that have the knowledge, go out for bids, bring people in before the council, give presentations, tell us why we have to do it. Does it make sense? Doesn't it make sense? It's not a quick overnight process, okay. a long, lengthy process. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Stieber. Thank you. You know, as you know, we are in the midst of building a $14.5 million electrical substation um, just up the hill from Town Hall. Um, we have to make sure that that tremendous investment is managed professionally. Uh, what I would like to see happen is uh, we have a professional services contract with a, uh, a, a, a large uh, electric management company that could come in and supervise and oversee the, the management and upkeep of that system. Um, you do that through a professional services contract. I would like to see that happen. And remember, folks, we have a pretty small uh, contingent of guys that work for our uh, utility department. Uh, those gentlemen would stay on working, and they would work to be our linemen. They would take care of the day-to-day -day operation of the poles, the lines, the services, the line clearing, these kind of things, uh, and learn and be able to go in and work with the, the professionals uh, that would take care of the substation. But I certainly would not leave the management of a $14.5 million substation um, to linemen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We have, we have two more questions from the public. Do we have time for those both or? Okay, sounds good, just thank you. Um, this is a, a totally different topic. Um, how, and we're, again, we're starting with Mr. Stieber and then Mr. Dixon. Um, how do you feel about Milltown having its first female judge taking office this year in, the, in January of this year? How do I feel about having our first female judge? Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, sex of, of a judge to me uh, is irrelevant. What we need is people that have uh, a, a fine, uh, firm grasp on the law and are fair, impartial, and understand that um, in Milltown, uh, we, we expect to have a tightly run ship. Uh, from what I understand in uh, observing the judge and from what I've heard from our uh, police, uh, that she's doing a fine job, and we're we're happy with her. That's great. Thank you. Now, Mr. Dick Mr. Dixon. Before I became I came back to council in January, we were advised that the current judge was going to be retiring, and God bless him, he did a great job while he was here. Very well respected man. And we knew at some point in time, probably in January, we were going to have to appoint a judge. 
A lot of people looked at me and asked, because of my background as 30 years with the prosecutor's office, could you possibly know somebody? Well, the, the answer to that question is yes, but let me ask around. And neighboring towns, she was also a judge in. Okay. She was well respected in those towns. I interviewed the police in those towns, the court clerks, and the operators that was to talk to them. Would she be a fit over here? Would it be good for her? They all, out of 10, they all gave her a 10. They said she'd be fantastic, and they did not want to lose her. I have known the judge 15, 20 years. I've worked with her when she was a prosecutor in the prosecutor's office. I have a lot of respect for her, as do the local police officers here. And I speak with them all the time. And again, I don't speak with them as a councilman. I speak with them as a former police officer. A different kind of conversation. Well, that, that makes certainly makes sense. So, well, thank you very much. Okay, and now our last question from the public. And this is, uh, again, back to the general. Uh, what, do your, what do your running mates bring to the ticket that will enha enhance your candidacy for mayor? Could you read that again? Sure. What do your running mates, the, the committee candidates, bring to the ticket that will enhance your candidacy for mayor? Well, I have two running mates, Neil Rossetti and Rich Revolinsky. Rich is an engineer. He can assist the council when decisions have to be made. He can talk on an even basis with CME, who's done a lot of work in this town and a lot of programs. He has that knowledge. He has that experience. And I would rely in his direction and his guidance on what he's saying. I would love to have him on council just for his knowledge. Neil's been on council for a while now. He has held council president position, and he's an asset in his thoughts and his design and his desires and how to move the council forward and ideas in town. I would be proud to be with both, both of those gentlemen on the ticket, and I am proud of them being on our ticket, and I'd be more than proud to serve on council with them. Thank you very much. And finally, Mr. Stieber. Yes, I have uh, two people running along with me. Uh, first would be Randy Farkas. Uh, Randy's a tremendously hardworking man, um, and I don't know anyone who has more stick to than Randy. Um, he is a seasoned councilman. Uh, Randy's the man who's not afraid to touch the issue that everyone will run away from. When there's a, 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 an issue that is on fire, Randy runs in, he doesn't run away. And uh, it's a tough position that he puts himself in, but he always ends up on the right side of it somehow. And I, I'm, I'm very proud to be running with Randy. And my other running mate um, uh, is Nick Ligotti. Nick is new to uh, government, uh, but he's not new to volunteering and coaching. Uh, Nick would bring a new perspective to a lot of things. Uh, he's a wonderful guy, he's a lot of fun to be around, but he's also very intelligent and very astute uh, on what the needs are of the folks in Milltown. Terrific. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That wraps up our, our uh, audience questions, and at this point we will take a five-minute break to allow the candidates to prepare their closing statements. Thank you very much, and come back. Okay, welcome back. We are now here for the closing statements of our two mayoral candidates for Milltown. And first, Ron Dixon will present his statement, and then Eric Sieber. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for hosting tonight's candidate forum, and thanks to everyone that's here who are interested in hearing the candidates' views. Many of you in Milltown know me as someone you can trust. In the many meetings I've attended, I've heard what people want what they need, and what they expect. I'll meet those needs and exceed those expectations. I am motivated by a deep and abiding passion to strengthen Milltown by connecting the community to an honest agenda that realizes a direction for the town that so many are eager to see and that we all deserve to see. I will stand up for Milltown and stand up for your interests because they are my interests too. Milltown is my home. I want to ensure we are meeting our town's obligations to its residents and in solving our really tough issues. With my past professional experience, 
and time on council, I have the qualifications necessary to be our next mayor. Our town needs a full-time mayor who is both available and visible and will do whatever it takes to get the job done. I am that person. If you can see the future in the way that I do, and if you also believe in a better mill town for all, please join me and I will fight and push forward until we all realize these results together. It is my sincere hope that you'll consider me for your mayor, and I ask for your vote, and a vote for my running mates, New York City and Rich Revolinsky, on November 3rd. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless Milton. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Dixon. Er, Mr. Steber. Mr. St Him too. <laughs> you know, you know, you'd think at the end I'd get it right, but I, I've gotten it right all night, so. Well, it's, it's tough. We got two good-looking guys sitting up here, so <laughs> can't go wrong, you know. I don't know. <laughs> are, we, are we ready? We we'll are ready. Up. Go for it. Okay, my dear friends, tonight you had the opportunity to hear the biographies, ideologies, and records of two candidates running for the office of mayor. It is now up to you, the good people of Milltown, to decide with whom you will entrust to lead this community forward for the next four years. At this time, I wish to take the opportunity to make my positions perfectly clear. I pledge to continue to work with and support all of our council, regardless of their party affiliation, to move our town forward and achieve notable positive results. If re-elected, I will continue to work diligently with residents in the council to stabilize the tax levy, solve our water quality issues, and make improvements to our community at an affordable rate. I will create a new tax-deductible organization that can receive grants from businesses and foundations, as well as appealing to all levels of government to obtain revenue in the form of grants and low-cost loans. I will continue to work tirelessly on ending area flooding problems, as well as solving quality of life issues for residents. Earlier this year, the New Jersey Family Magazine rated Milltown as the 12th best small town in the state to raise a family. They said, and I quote, just 1.6 square miles, this central Jersey community is as peaceful, close-knit, and kid-friendly as they come. Highly ranked schools, low crime rates, affordable living, and short commutes earn this spot 12th place on our list. But it's Milltown's forward-thinking, civic-mindedness that really makes it stand out. In recent years, the town has been funding projects to revitalize local businesses on Main Street, preserving its roots as a grist mill community, and creating more green space Unquote. The editors at this magazine are correct. Places like our beloved Milltown don't just happen. They are created by people with a clear vision of who they are and what they wish to be. It is created by forward-thinking leaders that move a community in a positive direction by listening to and heeding the concerns, needs, and goals of its residents. I believe I have proven to be that leader for the past 25 years. My motivation to serve as mayor is to continue to serve the people of Milltown. Our senior citizens who chose to retire here to live their golden years in the comfort and safety they created for all of us to enjoy. Our established families working to make ends meet while saving for retirement and sending the kids to college. Our young families who came to Milltown, many times leaving friends and family behind to raise their family in this safe and loving community. And our children who deserve to grow up far from the worries and the dangers of the world around us. On November 3rd, please elect the candidate that brings lifelong experience, commitment, dedication, and a clear vision of Milltown's future. Please re-elect me, Eric A. Stieber, to the office of mayor, and elect Randy Farkas and Nick Ligotti to Barrow Council. Thank you, and good night. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. and. Let's have some applause for our candidates. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much. And again, thanks to Milltown uh, Community Television, Channel 15, for sponsoring and organizing this, this forum. And, uh, See you next week for the, the council forum. Thank you. Good night.